Okay, so I just put the uh, frame of honey right inside the bucket. And all I do is, is cut right on the edges here. And now I'm going to cut along the top, and it's going to just flop into the bucket. Now I can stop there, and I can just cut this piece out and let it fall. And there it goes. And I just keep cutting down, and it'll just fall into the bucket. All right. So there's no wax foundation. This was all natural comb the bees made. And so it's easy to just cut off. And they did a pretty good job. I didn't even have a wedge as a guide. I just had a flat surface for them, and they made a nice straight piece of comb honey for me. And so we'll just take a potato masher. And you can use your knife or a potato masher. All you want to do is just break up that comb. Obviously, the comb is not going to be reused, but it can be melted down after it's strained. And you can use it to make candles or cosmetics or something. And all I'm going to do is just use my knife to cut this up. Some of the honey is in comb that's um, about a year old, so it's a little stiffer. Some of the honey is new, freshly drawn wax, nice and soft. That's the best. That crushes up so easy. But that's cut up pretty good. Now I'm going to use my potato masher and crush it some more. So all you do is you just take your masher and do that with it. So uh, what we have now is uh, six frames of crushed honey in a bucket with um, quarter inch holes at the bottom and then it's running through a strainer into our honey gate bucket. So it just gets crushed in here and strained right here and then this bucket will fill. And six frames of honey is um, approximately six quarts. I'll probably get just a little bit more than that. I usually get just a little bit more per frame. These are medium frames, standard Langstroth medium frames. Each one gets one quart of honey. Sometimes I can get a quart and a half. Just depends how much they pack onto it. They can pack almost two quarts onto one if they really get into it. <clears throat> now it's also good if you have a nice hot day like today. Um, it's probably about 80 degrees. I'm on my deck and it feels like it's about 90 just because the deck is a dark color. That is perfect for straining honey. The nice warm temperatures are gonna help that runny, or honey run down into the bucket. And just so that the bees don't accidentally find this, because if they do, they'll tell their friends, and next thing you know, we'll have about a thousand dead bees floating at the top of the honey. So I have a garbage bag that I'm just going to cover it with, and it'll keep out the bees. And we'll bring it all the way down. Bees are experts at finding a way to die in honey or water, so you don't want them to accidentally get into it. So we'll cover this up and keep them out. So all we got to do now is come back and maybe this uh, late afternoon or evening and we'll have uh, strained wax on the top and we'll have a bucket full of strained honey at the bottom which we can put into jars. So we'll see you later. I got that. <laughs> you got that. All right. So now we've got four jars filled and um, we're just getting the last little bit of honey out. And so I'm just going to do it like this. I don't do a lot of honey. So this is uh, good for the five or ten minutes it's going to take me to do it. It's not a big elaborate setup, obviously, but it gets done anyway and now I've got some honey that I can put away and store for a while and this is the early honey too what's really good about it is um, there's more to come some pretty good stuff's coming it's going fast ready switch jars I'm going to have to tilt 
tilt that a little bit. So we got about six and a half jars, almost seven jars. Not bad. And it didn't take very long at all. So that's how you extract honey without an extractor.